In this video I want to show you how to install Kali Linux on a USB drive. This will not be a live USB drive but a full installation on the USB drive as you would usually do on a hard drive. In fact we will not even use the live ISO with the live environment, we will just use the ISO with the installer. In the end you will get a clean Kali Linux installation on a USB drive that you can basically take anywhere to any PC and just boot into it. And since this will not be a live USB environment, all the changes that you are doing inside Kali Linux will be saved to the drive and the changes will still be there if you boot in again. You can also update the system, you can basically do everything what you would do in a normal Kali Linux installation. Before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find everything about Linux, Docker, game dev and software development in general or short Agile Dev Art. If you like that kind of content then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. In the previous videos I also showed you how to install Ubuntu, Manjaro, Linux Mint and Pop! OS on a USB drive. If you're interested the link to the Linux Mint video is somewhere up there or down in the description. Also down in the description are the timestamps of this video so you can skip any part if you want. This video will be in the same format as the previous installation videos so let's get into it. Here I am on the official Kali Linux website, we want to download the ISO, so let's go to download. Down here you can see the live boot ISO which you could use if you want to install Kali Linux. In my case I had problems with this one, I could not get through the installer, so for this video I chose this installer, bare metal. Let's go with that one and down here let's download the ISO. It has 2.9 gigabytes, so this can take some time. Download finished, here it is. And now we want to flash this ISO on a second USB drive. So yes, we will need two USB drives. This install a USB drive where we will flash this ISO can be any off the shelf stick, it doesn't matter. But the first USB drive where we will install the full Kali on it should be a more faster one. Otherwise the whole Kali system will be very slow and you will get really frustrated if you use it. So get a decent USB drive. To flash this one on a USB drive we will use a tool called Rufus. This is Rufus, this is the official website and all links from this video will be down in the description. So let's find the installer, here it is, let's download it, finished, let's open it. Here it is, we also used Rufus in other videos, so what you need to do, you need to plug in your USB drive, I will do it as well. And as you can see Rufus has recognized the USB drive that I plugged in. If you don't see your USB drive here, then you need to find it here in the drop down, this is the only one I have. And now let's find the ISO. Here it is, open, all the defaults are ok and just start. ISO image mode is ok. And now it warns us that everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. So if you have something important on there, make a backup first. In my case I don't have anything important on there, so I will just continue with ok. This can take some time. Alright, ready, so we can close this. The ISO is now flashed onto the USB drive and now we need to boot into it. I will assume that you already know how this works, so usually you plug in the USB drive, you restart your PC and then while it is restarting you press one of the function keys, F11 or F12, depends on your PC manufacturer, then you should get the boot menu and in there you should select your USB drive. I will do the same on my system as well and I'll meet you there. This is it, Kali Linux install a menu, so we boot it into the USB drive. Now it's the right time to plug in the second USB drive where we will install Kali Linux on. I will do this as well. Alright and now select graphical install. Select a language, I will just go with the defaults, English is ok. Location default as well, keyboard is ok. Enter your host name, Kali is ok. Domain name, I will just leave it empty. Now write your full username and continue. This one will be my Linux username and the password. Here you can set your time zone, I will leave it on default. Now if you get this prompt that you need to force UEFI then select yes because this method that I'm showing you will only work if your system supports UEFI and since UEFI is supported for the past decade or so this shouldn't be a problem. So let's go with yes and continue. This is the important part now, here we need to select guided use entire disk. Now here select the USB drive that we previously plugged in and where we will install Kali Linux on. In my case this is the one, SDC. All files in one partition, that's ok, so let's continue. Now here you get a preview how the drive will be partitioned. 
it will create an EFI boot partition, then a second ext4 partition, this will be the root partition of the Kali system, and you will also get a swap partition. And that's about it, now select finish partitioning and write changes to the disk. Now I need to mention everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted, so if you have anything important on there, make a backup first. And let's continue. Again here we get the summary, write changes to disk, yes, and continue, and let it install. Here the installation asks us which software we want to install, so we can choose between desktop environments here for instance, XFCE is the default, but you can also choose GNOME or KDE Plasma, I will go with XFCE. Then down here we can choose the tools, if you just want the top 10 most popular tools, and if you want all the default tools, which is recommended. I will leave the defaults here as they are, but I need to mention that I had problems with this step on some other devices, the installation just blocked me on that one, the installer just could not install the tools, and if you have a similar problem on your side, then what I did, I just unchecked this default tools, and then the installer went through. So if you have a similar problem, just uncheck the default tools and continue. But in my case I will leave everything as it was, and continue with the defaults, and let it install. This can take some time. Alright, now after about 35 minutes, the installation finished. Now we can plug out the installer USB drive, but leave in the USB drive with Kali Linux on it, because we want to boot into it and check the EFI partition. If some things are missing on the EFI partition, then we will need to fix it, and in that case, if you plug out the USB drive without fixing the EFI partition, probably you will need to repeat the whole installation process. So don't plug out the Kali Linux drive just yet. I will plug out just the installer USB drive, and now I will go to continue, the system will reboot, and then you will need to go into the boot menu again, and select the USB drive where you installed Kali Linux, that's what I will do as well, and I will meet you there. And here we are, Kali Linux login screen, this is now running from the USB drive, now let's log in, write your username and password, and log in. We are logged in, this is Kali Linux, the XFCE desktop, now let's check the EFI partition, go to terminal, and let's write sudo tunar, and the password. Here let's go to file system, and boot, EFI, inside here you should see the EFI folder, and inside, here is Kali with the EFI entry, but inside the EFI folder there should also be a boot folder, and this boot folder is missing here. So let's fix that, close this, and now inside the terminal write sudo grub install and dash dash removable dash dash recheck and dash dash EFI dash directory equals slash boot slash EFI. Run this one, enter, installation finished and no error reported. Try again sudo tuner, file system, boot, EFI, EFI again, and as you can see here is now the boot folder with the boot x64 EFI entry. And that's about it, we can close this now. Now the EFI partition is fixed and we needed to do this grub install only once, and the USB drive should be good to go, you can close Kali Linux, you can take out the USB drive and basically take it to any machine you want and boot into it. Now again I need to mention a few issues that I came across here, I'm not sure if it is an installer problem, but I could not get Wi-Fi running on this one. As you can see here, we are connected only by wire, and not over Wi-Fi. Maybe Wi-Fi will work on your machine, maybe I should have selected the full install ISO, instead of the recommended ISO, I'm not really sure, but I hope this will be fixed in the future. And that's all for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It makes the channel grow, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.